Okay guys, today we will be installing the Inferno heaters on the 2021 R-Max. We called up Inferno and we have done four of these heaters. This is our fourth one. They're really great to work with. Uh, the kit comes with your, with your motor that mounts under the seat conveniently. It's got your vents that go in the side panels. And then it's got your defrosters couple of Y's, your standard 5 8 heater hose. You've got your Y's, some clamps. It's got this awesome little Inferno toggle switch. Comes with a factory harness that is plug and play. It's great for Yamaha. And then obviously it's got your venting. So on the Yamahas, they have this little slot right here that is factory for your defroster. We all ordered the EMP windshield and I believe there's another one out there. The Yamaha window is perfect for this spot because the glass comes all the way down. We ordered EMPs, all four of us in our group, and we had to move these back so they hit glass. And here is the EMP windshield. So you can see what I'm talking about. It has this nice protection all the way around it. So when we're going through bushes and branches and stuff, it doesn't hit the window. You can see how it's kind of marred up, but the glass is perfect. So way down in here is where we have the stock vents. So we're going to move them right back here. So when it comes up, it hits the glass. Same thing for the other side. This one's got the mud busters, mud flaps, and then we did the block offs, which I don't know if you noticed over there by the Inferno heater. Mud busters has already sent our stuff. Uh, here's the other side. Obviously this is way down low and we don't want to defrost the metal. We want the hot air. We live in Washington, so it's gonna be raining and we would like this window to be nice and defrosted. So we're doing an alteration to that. We're moving those up. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this all apart. You just grab the bottom of your seat. Seat pops up. We'll move that to the side. And there's four bolts here. Right there. So we'll pull those. I believe they're 12 millimeter. We'll do that to the passenger and the driver's side. And then as soon as that's done, we'll... Uh, We'll go to the next part. Okay guys, so we got the seats out. Now what we're gonna work on is removing the center console and the, the outer ring here. So you pull this forward. We're gonna remove this 10 millimeter bolt. There's a bolt here, here, and all of these plastic along the side here. There's another 10 millimeter bolt there. On the driver's side, we will remove these with a T25 Allen. You pull those two out and you pull this one out and all that does is make it easy to slide this panel out. We will remove the bottom plastic piece. This is where the heater actually mounts underneath here. On the other side, same thing. We're gonna remove this bolt these plastic nuts here um, these just pop up this one right here you don't want to pull on it because these have the seat belts have tabs to hold it and then once this is out so you take this center ring out first this comes out once you do that and this is all disconnected what we're going to do is we're going to take this center console and we're just going to lift it completely up in the air with your gear shifter in the high or low position more forward the where the gear shifter sits does not come out this head fits in between the slot here so you want to pick it completely straight up not to damage here this the plastics under here if you pick it straight up it'll slowly roll out and then you pick it out and everything will be exposed so remember this comes out first 10 millimeter bolt and these are just pull tabs you just pull them as you can see there's little snap-in rings there um, most of you, if you have the LE, have the comfort shock. We put an LED light bar on this one. 
So you will disconnect on the back side these toggle switches and this whole panel just comes out. So uh, let me get that going and I'll take another video. Okay, so we have removed this plastic piece under the seat, removed the center console. We had to remove the valance around this, the trim package first. These are the harness, the wiring harnesses that I told you about. The little white clips there, those are for my LED. The white factory looking plug is for your um, shocks. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna slap our heater in spot, okay? We're not gonna bolt it down yet. And then we're gonna tie into our heater hose, which it's gonna be right here. Not sure where I'm gonna tie it. I remember we did it in a different spot, but each time we do these, we move stuff around. First, I'm gonna drain the fluid. I'm gonna remove the windshield. So in order to re reach down under here, These two right here are your oil. Do not drain those. This is the one you want. This is your antifreeze, okay? It's your antifreeze on this side. Your return antifreeze is right there. So both those need to be drained. You open those up, open up your cap on your radiator and she'll start draining down. So I'm gonna get this thing draining. Hi girl. I'm gonna get it draining and I'm gonna remove the windshield and then I'll start the next video. Okay, so we've got all the antifreeze draining out. We removed our windshield. Now at this point, you can go ahead and do anything you want as far as instruction wise. What I'm gonna do is hurry up and drill I'd like to drill my vent spots, right? In order to do that, I'm gonna remove these T25 Allen sets. And all of these, there's a 10 under here. There's a 10, 10, 10, 10. All of these and all this will come out. Then you'll be able to see under there where you're gonna run your vent hoses. Um, you will remove your turtle mode key. There's a harness there. Uh, you don't have to remove this if you don't want. Just lay it over. I'm going to remove the top piece here. And you'll see that in a second. And then I'm going to trace them out. And so it says that there's uh, pictures in the back. And if you look online, online instruction camp PDF that you can get from Infernos, it does show them here. But what I'm going to do is take the vents and flip them upside down. And I'm just going to use these little guys right here as my templates. It's an eighth inch drill uh, for the hole to get the hole started. And then what I'm going to do is just do a half inch drill, come in, and it doesn't matter. You know, you don't have to go all the way to the end. I'm going to use a sealer on each side. So that way it'll definitely seal it in. If you look in here, you see the white stuff there. It's like a foam. And all that did is made sure that it's definitely pushing out the top and not underneath. Okay, so I'll get that torn apart, start my template, and then uh, shoot another video. Okay, guys, so I went ahead and removed the T25 screws and the 8 to 10, number 10 metric bolts that hold that in place. All I did was just pull that up. I'm not sure where I put it. Oh, over there. So there was no template. So what I did, I just used this, like I said. And all I did was put a center punch here on this side and a center punch here. And then I marked the inside with the marker. And then I took a 5 16 Well, then I drilled it eighth inch here, eighth inch here. Then I came in a little bit, did a pilot hole. And then I used a 3164. It's smaller than this, so that my lining on the inside will be just a little bit tighter. I think it'll look nicer than what I did on mine over there. So again, we use this as our template. We just set it down. 
drilled the eighth inch, eighth inch, then came in, did the same thing. Again, I marked the inside. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Dremel, and I have a line here, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's two lines, and I'll just cut that out along there, that'll be the long slot there. Um, you can use a knife, you can use whatever. I just want it to look clean and then I'll clean it up with the razor blade. These here are your accessories. So any one of these plugs is where your Inferno harness will plug in and it works with your key. As soon as you turn it on, it comes on. It never stays on unless the key's on. So we'll run it all up through there. So I'm gonna drill these out. And then I think the next thing I might do, well, we'll see what happens. Let me get this cleaned up. Okay, so we drilled these out with a template cleaned them up a little bit they'll sit here did it on both sides now we're going to run our heater hoses the instructions say to run your vent lines first but we found in the cowl in the middle it's a little pain in the ass if you put the vents in there first the vent lines so we're going to run our coolant lines through there we did put this in here center punched it where we're going to do and we'll drill that we took our return line for our coolant is right there. You see it's cut? You cut the outer shield. There's a protector shield. And then you just remove about an inch. It just makes your Y easy to fit back on there. This Y needs to be facing up. It needs to be facing up. And we'll run that over the air cleaner, the air intake right there. On this side over here, your heater hose is right here. This is cut. Here's the protector we were talking about. This Y needs to be facing down. So we're gonna bring it down under here and bring it up to right here. So I'll go ahead and set the heater in here, get my Y set up, clamp them all in, run the first line all the way to the front there to the return, and then I'll uh, do another video. All right, so we hooked up the Y on the return line of the antifreeze. That Y has to be pointing up. And we ran it up above so it doesn't get on the shaft. You can see the drive shaft down there that goes to the front end, the front differential. So this hose, this is the heater hose, runs up and goes around. We ran it on the inside here right on the inside, up to the top, down. And you can see it moving right there. And then it'll sit right here. The other one, here's the other Y. We removed that protector, put that in place, ran it underneath here. And when you get it just right, it won't be rubbing on this or on the bottom, nothing. It'll be, it'll just sit perfectly. So it'll prevent you from rubbing. There is this little thing here. You'll have to remount that down. As soon as we're done, we'll get that back in place. It'll sit there. We also ran our wiring harness, which pops out right here. It hooks to the heater. I zip tied it down in there. Zip tied it here to the frame. Follow the factory stuff. Fed it up through here. This will plug into your toggle switch. The other end, we just reached right down in here, pulled it up and hooked it to one of these plugs. It don't matter which one, they're all for Yamaha accessories. So we got the heater lines or the antifreeze lines all ran. They're ready to go. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run our duct lines. We did drill out our holes already. There's one there and one there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach our duct lines to our vents and then we'll install them. And I'll shoot. I'll show you that before we hook them to the Ys. Okay. Okay. So we ran our de our ducts, our defroster lines. You run the lines from down there up first. Then you attach them. After you run them from down there, you, it takes two people a lot easier. You can reach them. I put this double sided sticky foam on there so it creates a seal in between here, and it blows the vent out to the vent. This side, same thing. You go from the bottom bring it up we attach those to the same y so that when you close these vents right here so these just screw on there 
those just come in from behind and you just screw that on there and then once they're screwed in place they rotate but when you shut these these will be hooked to the same y so that it'll force all the air through the defrost instead of having them on two different ones it'll just shut down that completely um we'll stack the vents both vents will stack on top of this y and they'll sit perfect this one we ran underneath underneath right here the next one we're going to run down through here and it'll pop out so we'll attach the defroster with this and these screws right now and then we'll put this back together and then we'll just be working on the Y's. Um, yeah, so we'll go forward in a minute. So I put this all back together. So this is the way it was. Your vents look pretty good. I went a little shorter. You can see inside there, the sealer works worked out pretty dang good. So before you put the hood on, because he already has his windshield, we'll put the windshield on next. Uh, as far as in the cab, again, like I said, these vents, so this little outer ring closer to the base, it just unscrews. You attach the hoses, the vent hoses to the part that screws on here. And then you reach in behind there, it's kind of a pain, and then you screw this onto the front. And then you, we did the same to that side. Then we brought, brought them down and connected them to the Y right there. As you can see, here's the Y. Connected them there, stacked it down there. And then we ran our hoses this way. So this one drops down through here, goes underneath and attached right there. We attached that one first. And then this one we brought through here and attached it next. Now our heater hose, we had it ran in a different way, but we realized we didn't like the heater, the, I'm sorry, not the heater hose, but the antifreeze hose, the return line, we didn't want it rubbing on any kind of metal. So we rerouted it and put it through there, came underneath. It's not touching here. There's, you have clearance from the bar under your seat, came down and then both those are clamped, clamp here and here. Um, we do, we did see that there is still plenty of room to put the eight inch sub if you want, uh, factory wires are there. Um, we did do the seat belt, the seat belt eliminator kit here. Uh, these are the speakers, the factory speaker wires. If you wanted to put that extra one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to fill the system back up with antifreeze so in order to do that you have to lift the front end up as high as you can and what we're trying to accomplish here is get the bottle uh, the radiator opening higher than the rest of the machine and so what we're going to do is we're going to lift the machine up we're going to jack it up and i have a funnel with the filter we'll use the same antifreeze that came out of it that was a pretty clean tray and then we'll have to top it off some more because we added that little radiator for the heater. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then we'll put together the center console. I went ahead and I put a 3 8 bolt here using the stock hole that was here. You pulled out the little plastic grommet and mounted it. Once you attach this to the frame here, this actually grounds it. So I pre-drilled that hole for once we get the plastic piece, we'll use the stock hole there and mount the, the heater here as well. So you can see there's a stock hole right there. So we'll get this back together. This bottom plastic piece goes in first. Then you put the center console in. Remember, we have to pick the center console straight up, drop it down, and then roll it as you set it. So straight up here in the front and then roll it down uh the seat belts kind of get in the way a little bit so you have to you don't have to mess with those pull them back so we'll get this set up and then we'll work on doing the switch we'll show you how to do the switch um yeah she's coming together pretty good 
Okay, so we did go ahead and I forgot to mention earlier, after draining the fluid and it stopped dribbling, we tightened those down where the antifreeze drains from. Uh, there's a little copper ring on there. You don't want to go too tight uh, and over compress the copper ring on there, but you do want to snug them up. Uh, I think the manual might have a torque spec. I went tight and then a little more, gave her a little love. We went ahead and jacked this up. As you can see, it's up in the air and we filtered the antifreeze that we put back in there. And then we put a little extra because the radiator and the new hoses take some up. And then we went ahead and topped that up. We ran it. Uh, we got the air bubbles out so it doesn't get air locked. Um, we're gonna go ahead and start putting the interior back together now. And this is real simple from here on out. Like I said earlier, uh, the plastic piece on the bottom, then we'll, we'll finish mounting the heater and then the center console. And uh, yeah, give me a minute. Okay, so we put the center console back together. On each side here in the front, when you slide it in there, remember you wanna pick it up, slide it in there. There's clips on both sides that have to hook to the plastic, which is kind of a pain. Pull your seat belts back. They have underneath here these little grooves that help create a seal once your seat's in there. We got the, you can see the bolt right there. That's for, that's holding the heater down. That's the other one. All the other ones are back in. You got a 10 millimeter here, 10 millimeter in the front on both sides. We got our center console or our trim package here in the front. So we've got the stock shocks, then the light bar that was previously installed, and then our Inferno uh, switch. And so everything just fits. Now this guy just goes in there in the front. And there's these little side clips right here that latch in there. So you wanna make sure that you get that in there first before you push down these little tabs here. So you can see, here's a tab right there. So those go actually into these slots right here. And then you'll have to reinstall the 10 millimeter bolt here. So we're gonna go ahead and get that on. We'll get our seats back in and then uh, we'll uh, show you what she looks like. Okay, so we got the window back installed. As you can see, our defrosters are set back far enough to where they'll hit the glass. They turned out really nice. This is, like I said, the fourth one we've done. Um, we found a few things that you could do easy. One of them is you don't have to pull the tire off. You got to make sure that you're willing to bend over there and reach that return line. Remember, the Y's got to be facing up. We did install everything. Got that side all put back together. I didn't install this one to show you guys. The bottom of the seat has these two little clips here. They hook under this bar. And this guy right here just fits inside the rubber grommet. So all you do is you just set it back. And then once you're in place, push down. And everything should work. Your, all my comfort light switch turns on. My light bar turns on, as you can see. Okay. My inferno heater. So this is off position is in the middle. This right here is on high. Oh, she's feeling good. Okay. You can open up the vents. Both sides if you want. Now these vents are pretty cool because they rotate. You want up towards your face or whatever you want to cool the boys off or whatever whatever you want to do okay they, they rotate every position and then you shut them down like I said we connected these two vents to the same one both of these are connected to the same Y so that these are getting the max amount of air so I'm not sure if it matters or not actually yeah it does as soon as you open that up it definitely makes a difference but there's that so she's she's good okay there you have it guys inferno heaters